This video is made possible by Audible, with an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more. Get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial at audible.com slash second thought. If you've seen films like Gravity or 2001 A Space Odyssey, you're familiar with possibly the most terrifying death imaginable. Slowly drifting away from your space vessel, watching it recede into the blackness of space, and understanding that you have no way to save yourself would be an awful way to go. But what could cause such a tragic mishap, and how likely is it that you could be rescued in time? When astronauts step out of the ISS, they're protected by several systems. First, and most importantly, their spacesuit, which protects the astronaut from the void of space and can supply up to around 8 hours of oxygen and 1 liter of water. The suit can be anchored to the ISS with a long braided steel tether, with a tensile strength of nearly 500 kilograms, which keeps the astronaut secure even if he loses his grip. Finally, spacesuits are equipped with what's aptly referred to as SAFER, short for Simplified Aid for Extravehicular Activity Rescue. SAFER is basically a nitrogen-propelled jetpack with a small joystick that allows astronauts to propel themselves back to safety in the event of a tether failure or other problem. These safety measures have a perfect track record. Thankfully, no astronaut has ever been lost in space, but it's definitely possible, and the consequences of becoming disconnected from the ISS are terrifying. Let's take a look at that scenario. In the event of your tether failing during EVA, you would begin to float off according to whatever forces were acting on your body when you broke loose. So, for example, if you had attempted to catch a tool spinning off into space and became unhooked in the process, you would slowly drift towards the tool, away from the ISS. At this point, with nothing to hold onto in a weightless environment, you'd be at the mercy of gravity. No amount of struggling could alter your course. That's where SAFER comes in. In an ideal situation, you'd simply power on the jetpack with the joystick, press a button to automatically negate any tumbling you might be experiencing, orient yourself using directional thrust from the jetpack, then begin the slow and nerve-wracking process of attempting to fly back to the ISS. But what happens if SAFER fails? In a situation where your jetpack refuses to function, depending on your trajectory and velocity, your odds of making it back to safety may be either very poor or basically zero. If you're lucky, you'll be drifting very slowly and not in a difficult direction, and you'll have another astronaut on EVA with you who could come get you, provided you're within the 26 meter range of his tether. If not, you're pretty much out of luck. The robotic arm on the space station is far too slow to capture a small moving target like a drifting astronaut, and there's not currently any vessel capable of rescue. The Soyuz capsules require a full day to power up and undock, and the space shuttle, the only vessel with a rescue-ready airlocked compartment, is in retirement. So unless a fellow astronaut was willing and able to attach multiple tethers together into one long super tether and attempt to jetpack out to you, you're simply out of options. Depending on your trajectory, you might begin to fall towards the Earth. When this happens, you'll begin to accelerate faster and faster, until you experience the unpleasant fate that is burning up on re-entry. If instead your trajectory was away from the Earth, you'd simply be captured in its orbit and have the remainder of your few hours of oxygen to contemplate your mistake. Depending on your personality, this could be the very worst death imaginable, or a fairly peaceful way to go. You'd have some water available to you so you wouldn't die thirsty, You'd get to watch the sun rise and set about five times, and see the continents and lights of civilization drift by far below you. Then, when your air runs out, you'll lose consciousness and fade away. Over the next 10 or 20 years, your body's orbit will slowly decay, and eventually you'll fall back towards the Earth and receive a free cremation courtesy of gravity. If you want to vicariously experience that visceral fear of drifting away into the dark void of space, go watch Gravity or this scene in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Or, if you're like me and like to drive a lot, or have a long commute, listen to the audiobook of 2001 on Audible for free. It's one of my favorite books, and I seriously can't recommend it highly enough. Audible is a great way to learn more about fascinating subjects, or just listen to your favorite books on the go. And unlike streaming or rental services, your books on Audible are yours forever. Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. If you enjoyed the topic of this video, I also highly recommend Astronaut Chris Hadfield's biography, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth, 
With Audible, you can download and listen to books like these on just about any device. And if it turns out you don't like a book you chose, just swap it out with Audible's Great Listen Guarantee. Sign up for your 30-day free trial at audible.com slash second thought and get a book of your choice absolutely free. If you're a fan of science fiction, give 2001 a try and tell me what you think of it in the comments below. Visit audible.com slash second thought to start your free trial today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell to join the notification squad. You can watch my other space-related videos by clicking here, or if you're in the mood for something a little different, come watch me play games with a friend on my new gaming channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.